Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the app status runtime component to start our applications. So think of an application scenario where you are tasked with developing a UI uh, with controls and everything, and also connected to business data, data layer, and displaying the right information at the right time. But at the same time, when you're developing these applications, you can see here I have some explorer bar, grid, some controls at the bottom, um, which is pretty much putting the things on, on the form as I would normally do and connect to the data. And then, uh, depending on, uh, on a sheet of paper or a design um, layout, I would go ahead and configure these, these different components and UI areas as to match, match the screen or match the printout as much as possible. So if, you, if you've been working with the controls in the past, you are very familiar with the appearance object and how it gives the control over each and every element in the InfoGisics tool set. So what this app styles runtime component does is that it gives you the same uh, uh, things um, but at runtime. It's a lot more flexible. It gives you sort of a runtime view of how the application uh, would look like. So you're not changing properties here and running it every time to see okay what, what would it change or what it changed at runtime and then coming back to design surface again and changing some other appearance settings. So uh, just to kind of give you uh, what, what we set up here. So I have the form set up here. I have this app size runtime component being dropped here. And uh, I have a doc manager uh, as well onto this form. And it has a button control. So what I'm doing in this button click is that I'm calling this method, uh, which is off of the runtime component that's onto the form. And the method I'm calling is show runtime app application styling editor. And once I do that, I just pass in the existing form so that hooks up to the existing form and then a caption for that for that for the editor control. So I'll run this now. You'll notice that the application as it looked at design time, it pretty much looked exactly the same because I haven't modified any appearance settings on the on the UI. And I have my doc manager here. So if I slide that out and click on this button, what's gonna happen is gonna open up this uh, editor control or styling editor. And uh, and the other thing what's going to happen is that as you take your mouse to different elements onto your page and if the mouse would detect that hey it's an infogistics element and it has some style attributes to it it's going to give you a tooltip and you'll see that the tooltip is going to follow as I move over mouse to different elements and what's happening inside of the tooltip is that the options which has a key and a row so for example if I wanted to change something on the grid or where my mouse is at I can change, I can hit the control, uh, the C key actually to uh, change appearance setting for the grid. I can hit the number one key for the cell, two for the row, and three for the grid control area. So let's say if I wanted to um, change some, some, uh, some style settings for the row. So I'm going to hit the number two key. And you'll see that at the bottom, uh, it actually came up with another uh, floating window. And what it's giving me is the settings for grid row and basically it's laying out all the possible appearance settings that you can have for the for the row so just to kind of see this thing in action I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna say let's say I wanna have a solid color of, uh, of, of green light green for example and you'll see that it's gonna go ahead and set my row settings to be that color I can also change the state uh, settings for that row so if I want to if, let's say hot track if I hover on that row I want to have a different color uh, maybe uh, maybe this shade and you'll see that as I'm going to hover on it now it, it kind of reflects that shade uh, immediately and if I want to have a selected appearance I can do the same thing so I'm just playing with one single property setting here but you can go ahead and modify if you have an image disable style you can set up a different border for different states you can set up a font setting so uh, for example on a selected state I want to have a, a different font for example let's let's go with pick something here um, century gothic and also have it to be a, a different font size so let's say 14 and you'll see that it's actually giving the, um, the different states if I select on it it actually changes the control so that when the font changes it's it's going to make sure there's a space for it as well so you can see that as I'm clicking on that it changes the font settings and also the font style and the back color at the same time Similarly, if I now want to modify an explore bar here, I can now hover on, on its settings and I'll see the similar tooltip but now with different options. 
So um, since I'm on, I'm, I'm on an item, I'm going to hit the number one key to, um, to get the explore bar item uh, s settings. And once I do that, it's again the same window, um, but now it's saying that it's now uh, going to affect the explore bar item. I'm going to go ahead, change the normal state. Uh, let's go ahead and set up a gradient on it. So I'm going to set the, uh, the, the color one to be uh, the shade here and to this guy here. And I can go ahead and I can say how the gradient should look like. I'm going to go with uh, glass bottom 20, for example. And it will affect the items immediately. So what, what's happening here is I'm basically at runtime in my application using the style editor and, and basically starting my app. Now you saw that here I don't need any development skills. I am not I don't have Visual Studio open or anything. It's a runtime application and you can actually ship this application with the runtime uh, editor to your designers and they can go ahead and design your application so you don't you don't have to worry about matching those appearance settings with their screenshot they want they want you to get at. And now what they can do is once they're done with styling, um, they can go ahead and save this style. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna drop it on my desktop and I can say my style and let's save that. Now let's close out of this application and let's run it again. So now I have my same application be loaded but again my styles are gone. So let me come back to my style and open up that dialog and this time I'm going to go ahead and load that style into my application. So on my desktop I'm going to go ahead and pick my, my style and you saw that just by doing that it's going to bring up the same styles back into my applications. Now you don't have to have a separate file for it, you can actually load this style at, uh, at, the, at the application start time. So once they're done with saving this, app, uh, saving this style, um, you can have it attached so that when the form is loading up it's going to take that style and the application would look, uh, look with the style by default. So in this application you saw that it's pretty simple and easy to use the App Styles Runtime Editor to style your application at runtime and so then you have to work around or try to match that screenshot that you've been given by your designers and, and changing the appearance settings. At runtime you can go to any of these elements and uh, using the keyboard and um, using the uh, style runtime dialog you can customize each and every element that part of, of your Infogistix tool set. It's pretty handy for yourself to use as a developer or you can have it as, as part of your application so your end user can take advantage of the same functionality as well. Thanks for watching this video. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.